As the Industrial Revolution continued, more and more people began to move into the cities. Crowded and difficult living conditions meant that adults died on a frequent basis, leaving many children parentless. However, without the traditional community net to save them, many children were forced to crime or prostitution in order to survive. Although the state and the church tried to intervene with orphanage projects, they were often overcrowded and unsatisfactory. Chucky Boy commented on this in the classic story, A Christmas Carol. I know how to treat the poor. My taxes go to pay for the prisons and the poor houses. The homeless must go there. But some would rather die. If they'd rather die, then they'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Oh, oh dear, oh dear. If you've never seen this version of The Christmas Carol, Beaker's about to give Michael Caine the middle finger. Oh, I think we've taken enough of Mr. Scrooge's time. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Upchuck also commented on orphans in his favorite novel, David Copperfield. Here's a scene where the Harry Potter kid played an orphan. Before he played an orphan? Aunt, I am your nephew, David Copperfield. Oh, no! I've been very unhappy since Mama died, and my stepfather hates me, and he made me work in a horrible place. <laughs> Anyways, Maggie Smith adopts Harry Potter. She beats the crap out of some donkey people I don't understand. And it's a happy ending. To be honest, Maggie Smith is one of these old ladies who scares the ever-living crap out of me. Like she would absolutely devastate Wes from Road Warrior. If she ever got in a fist fight with Judy Dentures, there would be so much quantum energy that my skull would explode. The only other person I can think of who might be able to put up a fight is Angela Lansbury if she hit Smith from behind with a chair when she wasn't looking. Of course, Dickie D's best story about orphans is his penultimate piece, Oliver Twist. Dickens doesn't hold any punches, and the first few years of Oliver's life really suck. Eventually, he meets up with the criminal Fagin, and he is led into a life of petty theft. You got to pick a pocket or two, you got to pick a pocket or two, boys. You got to pick a pocket or two. You freaking annoying British musical comquat, stop pointing at him, he's a good kid. Anyways, we get a glimpse of what Oliver's criminal future might be like when we encounter the cold-hearted character Bill Sykes. Bill Sykes completely lacks empathy, and it would be a real shame if Oliver became like him, because like I said, he's a nice kid. But that's the reality, if he wanted to survive in the street, he had to become hard. Dickens also shows us what it was like for orphan girls with the complicated character Nancy. Nancy's a prostitute, which was a bold move by Dickens in 1839, but she also looks after Oliver. She's an early example of the tart with a heart character, or hooker with a heart of gold, which we see often in modern society. Nancy's also in love with Bill Sykes, but unlike in Jane Eyre, we see what really happens when you fall in love with a Byronic hero. But we have come a long way. It's not like girls are still attracted to violent and unpredictable men. Personally, I always thought Clint Eastwood would have made an awesome Wolverine. Anyways, life in the crowded European cities was difficult, so many people moved overseas looking for better opportunities, but they weren't exactly welcomed with open arms. When the Irish came, the city was in a fever. Since the time of the Great Famine, they'd come streaming off the boats. And they got a right warm welcome. Go back to Ireland, you dumb mate! You remember that, you frog Irish! He's back in the food, Patty! I only came two hours downriver from Hellgate. But they all took me for an immigrant. Why not? There were a thousand different accents in New York, and to the natives, you see, it was all the same. Welcome to America, son. Your long, arduous journey is over. Go back to the old country. Both Germany! Some situations worked out better than others. Look at this Canadian Heritage Minute. 
In the 1850s, many Quebec families adopted Irish orphans, their parents dead of ship's fever on the Atlantic crossing. Alors Molly, voici ton nouveau père et ta nouvelle mère. Dorénavant, tu porteras le nom fier et historique de Bélanger. Tu es maintenant une petite Canadienne, Molly. No, we have to keep our Irish name. Mon mère me l'a dit just avant de sa mort. We have to pull the memoir de mon patrie. Ça, Monseigneur, ça me paraît tout à fait acceptable. Quel est ton nom, mon enfant? Johnson, sir. Molly Johnson. Et comment t'appelles-tu, toi? Patrick. Patrick O'Neill. Et toi? Monsieur Super Sex. A century and a half later, many of those names still resound in Quebec. However, many immigrant families experienced the same problems in North America that had made them leave Europe in the first place. The American Tale series follows the story of the Mouskowitz family as they immigrate from Eastern Europe to New York. They are disillusioned when they find out that there are cats in America, representative of poor living conditions and exploitive industry owners. So, the Mouskowitz family does what many families did. There is opportunity, Old West. Maybe they have a better appreciation of singers out there. So what are we fiddling around here for? Oh. Let's go West, partners! There was also an interesting social experiment called the Orphan Train. Between 1854 and 1929, over 200,000 homeless children were transported from the crowded eastern seaboard to the flat Midwest. Some orphans were adopted into families, and others just became workers. It's interesting to note that the abolitionists opposed the project because they viewed it as a form of slavery, while those who supported slavery viewed it as a threatening source of cheap labor. Of course, orphanages still played an important part, but in the late 1800s and the first half of the 20th century, a series of scandals emerged that forced child care to change forever. With no one to look out for them, these children were in a vulnerable position, and were frequently subjected to physical, mental, and sexual abuse. And with few restrictions, children were often sold on the black market. Another neglected and disturbing chapter of North American history is the eugenics movement. Like many quote-unquote civilized countries, both America and Canada were trying to achieve racial purity. Scientists believed that by sterilizing certain unwanted members of society, such as orphans, countries would be able to achieve near-perfect gene pools. In the U.S., 40,000 people were sterilized by 1944, and another 22,000 were sterilized by 1963. In Alberta, almost 3,000 people were sterilized by the time the laws were revoked. So it's no surprise that orphanages started closing down after World War II. But World War II was responsible for many orphans in its own right. Many men died in the fighting, leaving widows behind while women sometimes conceived illegitimate children from visiting soldiers. This caused a real identity crisis for children growing up in the time, as seen in the movie Across the Universe. If I would have known about you... What, you would have come back, is that it? You know, she said that wouldn't have proved that you loved her, only that you, uh, you felt obligated. Well, it would have been better than raising a kid on her own. Yeah, well, she wasn't the only one in those days. You could excuse a bastard by saying his dad was killed in the war. Some of the orphans in Britain after World War II were forced into a life of crime, such as the Richardson brothers, who were pretty nasty. Nonetheless, child care services has gotten enormously better in the last 60 years. Adult mortality has also dropped, meaning there are less orphans in general. And those parents who do need help can find ready assistance from government bodies. There's something wrong with this pie chart, but things certainly aren't perfect. In the States, there are thousands and thousands of orphans, many of whom are homeless and there's just too many to count. They're susceptible to drugs, to prostitution, and to crime, and we've got a long way to go. On the international stage, things are even more complex. It's hard to track how many orphans are actually in the world, but estimates range from 13 million to 210 million. When you look at problems like the AIDS epidemic in Africa, you get a picture of how vast this problem really is. I truly believe that orphan characters in recent fiction don't accurately portray what life is like for real orphans. And next time, I'll start explaining why I think this is. 
Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you learned some stuff.